Fire Country. The sound four were dashing through Fire Country at top speeds, carrying a very large barrel. Sasuke was trapped inside the barrel as he was advancing his curse seal to the next level. Pushing the curse seal and progressing to level 2 puts a lot of strain onto the user's body. So, Sasuke was inside the barrel, which slows down the seal progression. By slowing it down, it allows the seal to advance safely. We are being tracked by a team of five Konoha Shinobi, Kitomaru said as a small spider stood calmly in his hand, as if talking to him. Can we outrun them? Drobo asked. No, we are carrying the barrel, and they are gaining on us. I estimate one hour until they catch us, Kitomaru explained. Why don't we just stop and kill the bastards? Toyuyo yelled out, but Kitomaru shook his head. We stand no chance. Among them is Naruto Senju. Konoha's Thunder God, an S-Rank Shinobi. He is the blonde brat from the invasion, the one who broke into the barrier and crippled Lord Orochimaru. And then there is Hinata Hyuga, the Death Goddess, an A-Rank Shinobi, Kitomaru stated, as they all cursed their luck. They might be strong, but they weren't even a match for Orochimaru, much less one who can go toe-to-toe -to, -toe to him and come out the winner. And to top it all off, there is three elite Jonin among them. Just great, Toyuya sarcastically said. How the fuck do you even know all that? Toyuya asked. If you read the bingo book, you would know, Kitomaru stated. After all, we placed them there. So, what do we do now, shithead? Toyuya asked. Language, Toyuya, Sakon said, shaking his head. They're going to catch up to us. We need backup if we are going to complete our mission. I'm sending word to Lord Orochimaru, Kitomaru said, and sent one of his spiders who sank underground. In the meantime, I set up traps to slow them down, Kitomaru said, and they all nodded. If Sasuke were just awake from his coma, then they could easily outrun them, but carrying the heavy barrel was slowing them down. A few hours later, Konoha, 5 a.m., it was another bright new day in Kona, and the warm feeling already raining in the air, it was going to be another beautiful day. The sun was coming up shining upon Kona, the wind was rustling, the birds were chirping, and we could already see a few people walking down the streets. It was the beginning of a fresh new day in the Leaf Village. Ever since the Uchiha clan massacre, the patrols of Konoha fell to the Anbu jurisdiction. The usual setup for a patrol team was an Inuzuka and a Hyuka for tracking, and usually there would be a member from the Nara clan, and to top it all off, a powerhouse in ninjutsu. This setup allowed for their team to track and detect any problems, and if need be, restrain or kill the enemy. Currently, we find a fresh new team doing their morning patrol. They were jumping from rooftop to rooftop, keeping a discreet profile. The Inazuka member signaled their team to stop when he noticed a weird smell. Something wrong, Bor? The snake masked Anbu asked. I've picked up an odd smell. It smells highly of carbon, the Bor masked Anbu replied. And the snake Anbu made a signal for their team to follow the Inazuka to the location of said smell. In less than a minute, the Anbu team reached the origin of the smell. They all jumped down from the roofs and landed on the ground. They followed Bor and came across a bunch of ashes. The Inazuka sniffed the ashes and his eyes widened. These are no ordinary ashes. This was someone, Bor said. It's obvious that it was some kind of cover-up. We must report this to the Okage, Snake said, and they disappeared in a blur, leaving a member to guard the site, Senju Compound. For the first time since last night, the Senju Compound was peaceful. Naruto sleeping next to his princess, Tsunade and Jiraiya were quiet this night as far as Naruto knew, but like everything else, there is always an end. Naruto, Hinata, a loud and cranky voice echoed throughout the whole compound. Naruto jolted out of bed with Hinata on tow. He turned to look around, adjusting to the new light and noticed Hinata by the door. Get your asses out of bed and meet me in my office in five minutes, Hinata yelled. Naruto grumbled at Tsunade, not getting enough sleep last night. She gave us a couple of days and yanks us out of bed at ten in the morning, Naruto muttered since he didn't get much sleep the previous night due to Tsunade's activities. Be nice, Naruto. If she's cold, it must be important. Hinata said, pecking his cheek and going into the bathroom. Naruto just sighed and sent a shadow clone to prepare them a quick breakfast while they got dressed. Not even five minutes later, both Naruto and Hinata were ready to leave. Naruto placed an arm around Hinata, pulling her closer, much to her light, and they swirled away toward the Hokage's office. They had been wondering what all the fuss was about, but if they knew what awaited them, they would have stayed in bed. Hokage's office. 
What the hell is that? Kiba blurted out towards the incoming Okage. Tsunade had activated her space bridge in her office so she could wake up Naruto and Hinata. Tsunade had literally walked through a wall. Just something Naru set up so I don't have to walk all the way to the Senju compound and back, Tsunade explained and took a seat. Next to her was Haruzen. In front of her were almost all of the rookies. The Sand siblings were on a mission as well as Team 9 with Guy, so in front of her were Shikamaru, Ino, Choji, Kiba. Both Sakura and Sasuke were nowhere to be found. Naru? Kiba asked laughing. Where's little Naru? Kiba asked laughing while the others snickered. You have a problem with my little Naru? Sade asked in a dangerous tone. No, Lady Hokage, Kiba quickly replied bowing. Around five minutes later, Naruto and Hinata appeared in a swirl in the middle of the office. Sonate was already used to it, but the others still found it surprising to see Naruto use this type of technique. Space-time techniques were a field so unexplored that it was extremely rare to see one, with the exception of the summoning technique, of course. So, Naruto started. What's all the fuss about? Naruto asked his fellow rookies. We don't know either, Kiba replied. Naru, Kiba said in a mocking voice. Naruto turned to glare at his grandmother who shrugged him off. Listen up, Tsunade said, gathering the attention of the rookies. Everyone of the rookies was summoned except for Sasuke, who wasn't at his compound and couldn't be found, Tsunade stated. I have some bad news. Sakura is dead, Tsunade said, and everything went silent. No one of the rookies said anything as they were just staring at the Okagi and processing what they heard. What? Kiba asked in a weak voice. Apparently, Kiba was the first to break from the trance. I'm sorry, but it's true. Sakura was murdered last night, Snotty said. And everyone was shocked that one of their classmates, one of their teammates, had died and was assassinated in the first place. N no, Ino said, sobbing. That can't be true. Who would hurt her? Ino asked, crying. Tears flowing from her eyes as she clutched to someone nearby who happened to be Hinata. We don't know, Snotty started. This might be difficult to hear, but she was found as nothing more than ashes. We compared the remaining DNA material across the hospital database, and it came positive to Sakura Haruno. I'm sorry, Snotty said sadly. Sakura had been working hard at the hospital, and she was showing promise as a good medic ninja, but it seemed that her life had been cut short. The reactions were varied, but everyone was sad to see a classmate dead. Kiba frowned. Akamaru was whining, but only Ino was openly crying. It wasn't much of a shocker. After all, Sakura was Ino's best friend, even if they didn't really show it. They had known each other for years, and had been best friends and rivals since they were little girls. Who did it? Kiba asked with his anger surfacing. The one that killed Sakura would pay dearly. That he would make sure of. We don't know, Snotty said, turning to Naruto to raise an eyebrow. That's why I called you Naruto. Can you turn it back to yesterday and do something about it? Snotty asked. Sorry, but the max I've ever done was 12 seconds, not even close to half a day, Naruto said, shaking his head. Then there's no choice, Snotty said, and picked a small vial and threw it at Naruto. What is this? Naruto asked while looking carefully at the vial. It was a small blood sample. Is this for? Naruto asked, and Snotty only nodded. Naruto looked back to his friends and to Ino, who was almost catatonic. Do you think they can handle it? Naruto asked. We have no choice. Do it, Snotty said, and Naruto nodded. Everyone stand back, Naruto said, and pulled a large scroll before starting to write kanji on it. What are you doing? Kiba asked, confused. What did blood have to do with Sakura's murder in the first place? He's going to bring her back temporarily, so she can tell us who killed her, Hinata explained, and everyone's jaw dropped while Ino was a little bit happy she could say goodbye. Just how powerful are you, Kiba thought looking at Naruto, concentrating on writing the kanji perfectly. Shadow clone jutsu, Naruto said, and formed a single clone who went and got seated in a circle in the middle of the scroll. Naruto dropped a few drops of Sakura's blood to the scroll and started going through hand seals. Tiger, snake, dog dragon and clapped his hands summoning edo tensei naruto said and around the clone leaves started to crawl up on his body engulfing him completely slowly naruto's clone started taking the form of sakura her long pink dress formed then naruto's blonde hair turned into pink his deep blue eyes became green ones in just a couple of seconds sakura haruna was back from the pure world and into this one 
Where am I? Sakura groggily asked before she remembered all of the events that led to her death. Sasuke! Sakura yelled, and everyone had their eyes widened. I guess that answers the question, Naruto sadly said. Sakura, Shinani said, making her focus on her. Tell us what happened, Shinani said, and Sakura nodded slowly. Uh, uh, sure, Sakura said and gathered her thoughts. I was walking through the village last night, and it was already dark, so everything was quiet. I was going home when Sasuke and I crossed paths. He had a backpack on his back, and he was going towards the gates. He was leaving the village, Sakura said, and everyone was surprised, minus Naruto, who had always thought that it would end up like that. I tried to convince him to stay, but he didn't listen, Sakura replied sobbing. He... He suddenly appeared behind me and slit my throat, Sakura explained, and they all gasped at the brutality. I don't know why he did it. We were starting to get close, Sakura explained, and Ino quickly ran towards her and hugged her. It would be the last time they would all be together. Could it be, Naruto thought before he turned to Kiba. Kiba, were Sasuke and Sakura close? Naruto asked. What has that got to do with this? Kiba asked, confused. Answer the damn question, Naruto demanded, and Kiba quickly nodded. I noticed a few things, Kiba started. He would help her with her training. He answered some questions instead of replying. <laughs> and a couple other small things, Kiba explained, and Naruto frowned. Shit, Naruto said, rubbing his temples. I told you that this would happen, Naruto said, turning to the fifth, who sighed. You know why he did it? Sakura asked. Naruto nodded. He killed you so you could advance his eyes to the next level, Naruto explained, but got confused faces from almost everyone. What you know about the Sharingan is very scarce. You all know that the last level is a three tomo one, but that's a lie, Naruto started. There is another level above the normal Sharingan. It's called the Mangekyo Sharingan, and it provides the user with fearsome abilities both in Genjutsu and Ninjutsu. Look at mine, Naruto said, and showed everyone his eternal Mangekyo Sharingan. They were dumbfounded. They never knew that there was another stage to the Sharingan. Now, to simplify things, picture it this way. There are two sides to the Uchiha clan, from Uchiha's mainline, like me. This level is achieved by hard work, training, or life and death situations. However, for the branch line of the Uchiha's like Sasuke, they have to kill someone they care about to unlock it, Naruto explained. And once again, everyone was shell-shocked. Sasuke needed to kill someone close to his heart to achieve the next level. When they feel the pain and regret of killing that special someone, it triggers a reaction that unlocks their eyes, Naruto explained. And everyone frowned, but not like the old Okage. Naruto had warned them that something like this could happen, and happen, it did. Sasuke killed me just for his eyes, Sakura said sobbing. She liked, no, she loved that bastard. They were getting closer, but perhaps all that was just a ruse so Sasuke could unlock his eyes. He did care for you, Sakura, Naruto said, looking at her with compassion. Otherwise, it wouldn't work for him, Naruto explained, and Sakura nodded. What now? Naruto asked, turning to Tsunade. We hunt his ass down and kill him on the spot, Kibo barked out, and everyone seemed uh, to be in agreement. Sakura, Tsunade said, gathering attention. What time was it when it happened? Tsunade asked, trying to ascertain the distance at which he could be by now. It was around 11, Sakura replied. She'd calmed down, but still couldn't believe that Sasuke would just kill her for power. I guess she was naive about him and his lust for power. But I don't understand why he would leave the village, Sakura said. Power, Naruto simply said, but decided to explain it further. You know that his older brother, Itachi Uchiha, killed his clan a couple of years ago, right? Naruto asked, and they all nodded. He wants power so he can revenge his family by killing his brother. He has grown up with this fixation, and it's the very reason of his being. It's the reason why he breathes. Killing his brother has become his life goal, and he must have felt too weak here, Naruto explained. During the second stage of the Chunin exams, Orochimaru, the snake Sonin, came into contact with him and offered him power. If he felt that Konoha was hindering his growth, he would jump at the chance of power without question, Naruto concluded, and Sakura frowned. I'm issuing all of you, minus Ino, an S-rank mission, I said in a strong voice rising from her chair. 
You are to retrieve Sasuke Uchiha so he can face trial. If the retrieval proves impossible, you are to execute him on the spot. Bring his head and destroy his body, Shinani ordered and everyone nodded. That bastard would pay for killing one of their classmates in cold blood. He seems to be around 20 miles to the north, Naruto said as he had one hand on the tiger seal. How do you know that? Shinani asked surprised. You weren't Hokage yet, but during the second phase of the Chunin exams, Orochimaru branded Sasuke with the curse seal. I eventually placed a restraining seal on it, but along with it, I added the Shiki seal for my Hiraishin just in case, Naruto explained. And Hiruzen was surprised that Naruto would think of doing that. Then uh, just go get him and we'll wait right here, Snotty said, but Naruto shook his head. Something is interfering with this curse seal. I can barely feel my marker and it's becoming weaker and weaker by the second. At this point, I can't jump to him, Naruto explained, uh, frowning, but Snotty nodded anyways. Can't you use your Sharingan space-time technique? Snotty asked, but Naruto sadly shook his head. For me to travel using my Kamui, I need to warp into my dimension. The problem is that once I'm there, I can't feel my marker, so I don't know where to exit, Naruto explained, and Tsunade frowned. It's better than nothing. Naruto, you're in charge. You got his position. Get going, Tsunade ordered, and they all nodded. Gear up and meet at the North Gate in one hour, Naruto ordered. Sakura, Naruto said, turning to her. You are here temporarily until my clones lasts. However, I can't guarantee that I can hold it in battle. Use the time you have to say goodbye, Naruto sadly said. Thank you, Naruto, Sakura said, and hugged everyone goodbye as they all left to hunt the traitor. Konoha Gates, one hour later. One hour later, everyone was gathered at the gate so they could hunt down their traitor of a classmate. Their mission was simple, retrieve Sasuke Uchiha for trial, or kill him and dispose of the body, so that other villages could learn the secrets of the Uchiha. Not that with only a couple of them alive would do them any good. Naruto Senju, Hinata Yuga, Choji Akimichi, Shikamaru Nara, Kiba and Izuka were the members chosen in this mission. All of them were at the gate, ready to leave, all battle ready. Naruto, someone slowly said, and Naruto turned back to see Mabuki Haruno, Sakura's mother. I know that I'm in no position to ask this, not after everything I did, but... Can you please bring that bastard back so he can pay for what he did to my daughter? Mabuki asked. I already told everyone that I hold no grudge against any of you, Naruto started. I promise that I will do my best to retrieve him so he can face trial and pay for what he did, Naruto said. Mabuki thanked him. We have a Uchiha to hunt. Move out, Naruto said, and everyone in his team dashed out of the gates. Middle of fire country. Naruto and his team were running at full speeds towards Sasuke Uchiha. For some reason, Sasuke seemed to be still as if he wasn't moving at all. Naruto didn't know why he would do such a risky move while still inside the fire country, but he didn't judge. It was better for them if Sasuke stopped and gave them time to catch up. Kiba, do you have Sasuke sent? Naruto asked and Kiba nodded. Good, my marker has gone dark. It's up to you now, Naruto said, and he nodded, taking point. However, I smell four other scents in the same direction as Sasuke, Kiba explained, and Naruto brought a hand to his chin. It's possible that Sasuke had help, Naruto stated. What does it smell like? Naruto asked, and Kiba sniffed the air. Snakes, Kiba said. Looks like Orochimaru sent help, Naruto reasoned. We are all closing in at his position, Kiba stated, and Naruto took point. All right, team, Naruto said as they all stopped. We'll be approaching them stealthily. We don't know what kind of backup Orochimaru sent, so let's be careful. I'll leave a few shadow clones behind in case we're ambushed. Hinata, use your Byakugan to search for traps, Naruto explained. And everyone nodded. They all walked very stealthily towards the origin of Sasuke's smell. Hinata had already spotted a couple of traps and they were easily able to disable them. They arrived near the position and Hinata looked around spotting them. The sound four were resting on a nearby clearing with a large barrel. They bear the musical note as the headband symbol, so they must belong to sound, Hinata said. Makes sense. It appears that Orochimaru sent help to retrieve him, Naruto said, and activated his Sharingan to have a better look at them. They were a bit far away, but using a Sharingan, he easily identified them. They're the sound four, Naruto said, but got confused faces from his team. They're Orochimaru's elite bodyguards, and they're the ones who set the barrier during the invasion, Naruto explained, and they all nodded. If they're elite, do you think we can take them all on? Kiba asked, but Naruto nodded nonetheless. 
I felt their chakra, their ordinary tuning level. They're no match against me or Hinata, Naruto explained. Get in position, Naruto ordered, and they all nodded. Naruto swirled away and appeared a few meters on top of them. He was standing in a tree overlooking them. The rest of his team all took positions, flanking the sound for from all positions. The last one to get in position was Choji, who was silently moving to his position. Crunch. Choji inadvertently stepped on a small twig, and being Choji rather on the heavy side, the twig snapped loud enough for even Naruto to hear. There goes your stealthy approach, Naruto muttered under his breath as the sound four instantly jumped into action of the noise, taking defensive actions. Kuronosu, Naruto said, and everything turned back to the point Choji had yet to step on the twig. Naruto quickly flashed near Choji as he tagged every member of his team before the fight. Naruto pointed to the twig in the ground, and Choji rubbed the back of his head in embarrassment. Naruto swirled away to his previous location, and they all waited for the go-ahead of Naruto. Naruto made a hand movement and hundreds of shurikens ringing in the sound floor, coming from all sides, including above, uh, leaving them uh, no chance for evasion. Earth style, earth wall, a voice cried out in the sound floor. An earth dome rose from the ground and shielded everyone inside, making the shurikens useless. We knew you were coming a while ago, Kinomaru said, and the earth dome crumbled into the ground to show the sound floor with smirks on their faces. Naruto's team all regrouped since their attack failed and Naruto dropped from the tree, and it landed in between his team facing the sound floor. Hinata, Naruto started. Is Sasuke in the barrel? Naruto asked, as he didn't see Sasuke anywhere, but Kiba said he was around, so it didn't take a genius to figure it out. Yes, Hinata said, analyzing the barrel with your Byakugan. Although, something is happening to him. It looks like the curse seal is covering his whole body, and his heart rate is very low. It looks like he's in some kind of induced coma, but his chakra network is extremely active, Hinata explained. That's why my marker failed. They did something that the curse seal, Naruto concluded in thought, as it was the most logical outcome. Our mission is the retrieval of Sasuke Uchiha for murder of Akona Hashinobi. If you stand aside, we will allow you to leave unharmed, Naruto said stoically with his Sharingan blazing and glowing. You say that after you attacked us, you aren't leaving this place alive. Besides, Lord Orochimaru would kill us if we didn't deliver as a vessel, Kitamaru said. Vessel? Naruto asked confused. Lord Orochimaru switches his mind from body to body anytime he pleases. By doing so, he remains alive. Lord Orochimaru is an immortal, Kitamaru explained and smirked at the disgusted faces of Konashinobi. So that's why he wants Sasuke. He wants the Sharingan, Naruto thought to himself, before looking directly at the supposed leader of the group. What's your choice then? Naruto asked, but his smirk told them everything. It looked like they weren't going to get Sasuke back without a fight. Goodbye, fan win, Naruto said as his chakra spiked. He placed his right hand on his fan's handle, and with a mighty swing, he unleashed a very powerful gust of wind. Everything in front of him was blasted away. Trees were ripped out from the ground, and the sound floor were blasted away. Everything in front of Naruto, in the shape of a cone, was decimated. He's pissed, he not the thought look at Naruto. He never did really channel so much chakra into his attacks because they tend to be very destructive. Damn, Kiba said, uh, whistling at the destruction in front of him. Incoming, Hinata said, everyone took defensive stances. Against them were incoming strange golden projectiles. Hinata jumped in front of her team and performed a kite in destroying all the projectiles. Suddenly, they all felt themselves unable to move. A small tune echoed through the clearing. It was a beautiful tone. Naruto and Hinata easily saw the chakra being transmitted through the sound waves, meaning it was a genjutsu. They easily broke it themselves and freed their teammates. They looked around and all the sound four dropped in front of them. Naruto channeled chakra to his store seal and out came his Chikoto. He immediately channeled through it and the sword started sparkling with a light blue aura. Naruto dashed towards the sound four alone. Naruto arrived near them and began his onslaught on the sound shinobi. He sidestepped a punch from Sakon and used the opportunity to duck and sweep the legs of Toyuya. Toyuya jumped to avoid the leg sweep but was unable to block his kick that came out of nowhere. Toyuya placed her arms to block but was thrown backwards nonetheless. Naruto quickly rose up and performed a horizontal swing with his sword. Sakon tilted his head to the side and the sword grazed his hair, leaving a few strings floating in the air. 
Naruto jumped up just as a kick from Jirobo was about to connect with his body. Naruto placed a hand on his knee for leverage and twisted midair, bringing his sword against Kitamaru and quickly chopping one of his arms off. Kitamaru grunted in pain and jumped back to heal himself with Sakon and Jirobo distracting him. With Toyuya giving her support to her team, Kitamaru only had time to form a small plate of his golden material. As a Jugen strike connected with his chest, he coughed and jumped away again. He nodded to look at them curiously with her Byakugan and noticed small barriers that formed just above the skin. The skin was thick enough that her chakra laced attacked and penetrate deep enough to kill him. Why is it that every enemy I fight has a way to render my Jukin useless? Not a thought as she remembered her fight with Yugito back at the Chunin exams, and now this one. Back to Naruto, he was kicking the crap out of the sound bore. Toyuya's Genjutsu was useless against him. Jirobo was too slow to even get close to him, and his Sakon just didn't have the necessary skills to face him in a Taijutsu brawl. Naruto jumped to the side to avoid a club that came from a doki controlled by Toyuya. Naruto was midair when his Sharingan spotted some chakra, molding to his right side. He sent a golden chain to the ground, uh, and so he could maneuver himself while midair. He touched the ground to see multiple spider webs coming towards him. He raised an eyebrow towards Kitamaru, who was spinning out silk. Naruto brought his sword and simply cleaved the web in two, making it fall to the ground. Oddly enough, Naruto was being overrun as he simply couldn't move himself fast enough to cleave all the webs coming towards him. Fire style, fire dragon jutsu, Naruto said, and sent a torrent of fire towards Kitamaru. The fire obliterated any incoming web and crashed into Kitamaru, making him jump away if he didn't want to become extra crispy. Bang over fang, human bullet tank, Kiban Choji both yelled. Akamaru started spinning and going towards one of Toyuya's doki. Their attack connected and completely destroyed it, leaving nothing but chunks in the ground. Toyuya cursed her luck and began to focus again. Naruto was engaging Sakon and Ukon in combat. He was about to cleave Sakon's head off when another arm came out from his body and blocked it. After it, the whole arm became a body and stepped out from Sakon's original body as if he had duplicated. Naruto had jumped away if he didn't want to get crushed by another swing from the Dokis. Time to get rid of these annoying things, Naruto thought to himself as he channeled chakra into his eyes. Amaterasu, Naruto said, and the remaining two Dokis erupted in black flames. They squirmed around the field, smashing and destroying things randomly until they were nothing more than ashes on the ground. We need a level 2 now, Tuyu yelled to her teams as black markings started spreading themselves around each one of the sound bore. The black markings easily covered the whole body, changing their skin color to an unnatural brown. Tuyuya gained horns and Kinumaro gained an extra eye in the middle of his forehead. What is this? Naruto wondered and thought. Naruto had clearly seen the black marks spreading through their bodies, meaning it was the curse seal. But this seemed uh, much more powerful than the one he knew. Is it another version? Naruto thought to himself. Naruto dodged a punch from Jirobo who crashed in the ground and made a pretty decent crater. It's like Granny's punches. Naruto shivered at the thought of getting hit by one of those, especially Granny's. Naruto looked to his right and noticed that Kinomaru had some type of golden arrow pointed directly at him and getting ready to fire it. Kinomaru fired the arrow and it was coming in hot to Naruto. Naruto blurred from his position and arrived near Jirobo. Naruto channeled Lightning Chakra into his knee and delivered it to Jirobo's gut. Jirobo buckled in pain and let out a gasp. Naruto picked up Jirobo and threw him towards the incoming arrow. Jirobo couldn't dodge midair, and as such got pierced through his right shoulder, making his right arm useless. Jirobo fell to the ground, spitting out blood and with labored breaths. Shit, Kitamaru thought to himself as he had missed his target, and ended up hitting his teammate. Ukon appeared next to Naruto and tried to merge with them, only to phase right through him. The moment Ukon had phased through him, Naruto quickly turned around and blocked Ukon's elbow with both arms. Naruto extended Ukon's arm, easily broke it at his elbow junction. Ukon screamed in pain, but was quickly muffled as he was absorbed in Naruto's dimension, leaving a panicking sack on behind. This is not going well, Toyuya thought to herself, as she took notice to her teammate's status. Kinomaru had a missing arm, Jirobo had his right arm disabled and was bleeding from his right shoulder. Sakon just lost his counterpart, and herself had lost her dokis. She decided to help her teammates and rushed to engage Naruto in a taijutsu battle. In level 2, her speed and strength were greatly increased. Naruto turned around to see Toyuya running towards him and smirked. He activated his Kamui and sank underground, leaving Toyuya furiously looking for him. Come out, you bastard! Toyuya yelled. Naruto suddenly emerged right in front of her and gave her an uppercut. Toyuya was thrown upwards, and Naruto delivered a kick to her stomach, sending her flying. 
Not having enough, Naruto summoned one of his chains and attached it to Tayuya's ankle. He spun around and threw Tayuya into Sakon and didn't see her coming. Die, Kinomaru said as he fired another golden arrow. Naruto smirked as he used his combo and placed Ukon right in front of the arrow, trapping him in a chokehold. The arrow pierced Ukon's heart cleanly and bathed through Naruto, leaving Ukon's body without even slowing down. Ukon fell to the ground dead, and it was easily burned to ashes, as Naruto used a fire attack to light him up. No! Sakon yelled as he watched his counterpart being killed. What are you doing, Kitomaru? Sakon yelled as his partner had just killed a piece of him. The bastard has more tricks than I know, Kitomaru replied, but that was the wrong move. Naruto took advantage of his distraction and blurred his way towards him and locked eyes with him. Kitomaru let out a small gasp as he looked into the Sharingan. A small shadow crept behind him and trapped him at the spot. Not even one second later, he knocked up here next to him, using her daggers with wind chakra. She cleaved Kitomaru's head clean off. His head rolled onto the ground as the curse mark retracted and his skin regained the normal color. Shit, they got Kitomaru to you a curse as she watched the leader of the Sound Four die. These odds weren't looking good, and only two of the Konoha Shinobi were actively battling them. Even if they were in level 2, they stood no chance against Naruto and Hinata. Water style, exploding water wave, Hinata said, and pumped her lungs full of chakra. Lightning style, lightning dragon, Naruto said, and sent his own lightning dragon crashing into Hinata's water attack. Naruto's lightning spread across the ocean that Hinata created, and washed up against the remaining of the Sound Four who were too weak to even dodge. They all washed up in a nearby tree, twitching and spasming on the ground. They're finished, Naruto said, as he looked towards the remaining of the Sound Four who were barely conscious at that point. Get Sasuke out of the barrel, and let's take him back home, Naruto ordered, as he made his way towards the sound board to kill him. Splendid, a new voice echoed through the clearing. Everyone jumped at the sudden voice and regrouped. How nice of you to join us, Orochi, Naruto sarcastically said as they all took defensive stances in front of the barrel that contained Sasuke. How dare you speak to Lord Orochimaru with such language, another person that was close to Orochimaru yelled. That someone pointed his finger at Naruto and fired something from them. Naruto easily tracked them with a shonen gun and dodged all of them, catching one of them with his fingers. Did he just throw a bone at me? Naruto asked Hinata, who nodded. Do I look like a dog? Naruto asked the man threw the bones to Akamaru, who proceeded to eat them, making Kimaru's eye twitch. Naruto looked at the person that attacked him, and he had pale skin, vivid green eyes, masculine facial features, two scarlet dots on his forehead, and his shoulder-length wet hair, which he wore divided down the middle on his head with two separate partings on either side of his face. He wore a specialized version of the traditional Oto Ninja Ensemble, consisting of a light lavender, loose-fitting, long-sleeved zip-up shirt, black pants cut off around mid-calf, bandages wrapped around his ankles, traditional shinobi sandals, and a purple rope-like belt tied in an inverted bow around his waist. He also wore two red, two black hair ornaments, one on either side of his head, securing two locks of his silvery white hair. He did not wear a sound headband, despite his extreme loyalty to Orochimaru. His curse seal of earth is applied at the base of his throat, where it is a circular pattern of three curved lines. It looks like he fired his fingertips, but he already has more ready. He seems to be able to control his bones, not to explain to Naruto raised an eyebrow. Bones, Naruto pondered until it clicked. You're a Kaguya, aren't you? Naruto asked from the man, simply nodded. I thought you were all killed when you guys attacked Kiri a few years back, Naruto stated. I'm Kimimaru Kaguya, the last of the Kaguya clan, faithful servant of Lord Orochimaru, Kimimaru stoically said. Bright as always, Naruto, Naruto heard someone say and turned to see a figure approaching behind Naruto. Kabuto? Naruto asked, shocked to see Kabuto standing there. He had clearly killed him. Naruto looked closely at him until he noticed that his eyes were black and his skin had cracks. You're an Edo Tensei, Naruto stated, and Kabuto chuckled. I'm too valuable to simply be discarded by Lord Orochimaru. Although you forced Lord Orochimaru to take an early vessel, Kabuto stated, pushing his glasses up. So, you came for your next vessel, Naruto asked, looking at the barrel that contained Sasuke. It's unfortunate that I can't have you, so I'll just take the backup, Orochimaru said, chuckling. You think we'll just let you take him away? Naruto asked, smirking. 
this doesn't look good. A battle between me and Orochimaru will be very destructive, and I can't protect those three while I'm fighting. Even more that Kimimaru and Kabuto in the mix, Naruto thought considering what to do. I can do hand seals now, Naruto, and I'll be taking Sasuke with me, Orochimaru said licking his lips. Kabuto, Orochimaru said, and towards his servant. Heal the rest of the sound for to the best of your extent, Orochimaru ordered, and Kabuto complied. Kabuto went towards Toyuya and healed a few scratches and broken bones. He gave a couple of food and blood replenishing pills from Drobo and did the same to Sakon. What are we going to do? Kiba asked, gulping. He didn't like being against one of the Sonin. This is the golden opportunity to end the snake for good. Let's start by taking out the Sound 4, Naruto thought to himself as he readied himself to use his iteration. He had already marked every single one of the Sound 4 during his battle against them. Kamui, Naruto whispered and tried to absorb Kabuto into his dimension, but it was too slow and Kabuto immediately jumped away to gain distance from his current location. Everyone raised an eyebrow in confusion until they heard several thump sounds. They looked around to see the remaining members of the Sound 4 without their heads. I like these odds more, Naruto said smirking, and Orochimaru gritted his teeth. He had just lost four of his most powerful men, and Naruto had killed the last three in the blink of an eye. This brat is dangerous, Kimaru thought as he looked at Naruto very carefully. What the hell, Kiba yelled as he saw the head of the sand floor plop to the ground. He didn't even see Naruto move from his position. Kiba, Choji, Shikamaru, you guys take on Kabuto. Be careful though, he's an Edo Tensei, his body is immortal, and his chakra is limitless. You need to restrain or cripple him, and then apply this tag to his body, Naruto explained, and handed them the tag. Once you place the tag on his body, his soul will be released. He's as strong as Kakashi Sensei, so be very careful, Naruto said, and everyone nodded. Hinata, you take on Kimimaru. You both should be around the same level of Taijutsu. His bloodline allows him free control over every bone, Naruto explained. And she nodded. I'll take on Orochimaru, Naruto said, uh, looking at the smirking snake. You sure you can handle him? Shikamaru asked. He's one of the Sanin. Don't worry, I've already fought against him twice and nearly killed him the last time, Naruto said as if reminiscing his memories. Let's see if he can take me on alone now, Orochimaru said, and started releasing his chakra. Choji, Kiba, and Shikamaru cringed at the feeling they got. They felt there's nothing more than ants in the face of such an adversary. However, their jaws dropped when Naruto unleashed his own chakra that seemed to match and even surpass Orochimaru. The ground around them started cracking into pressure. A cloud of dust was starting to form around their feet due to the chakra output. Naruto's hair flipped wildly as the chakra seemed endless and extremely powerful. They both disappeared in a blur, and a loud shockwave echoed through the clearing, meaning that those two had begun their battle. Let's go, Hinata said, and everyone took their positions. Hinata vs. Kimimaru Hinata and Kimimaru both took their positions and respective stances in front of each other. Kimimaru seemed to be relaxed and more than confident in his abilities. Don't get me wrong, he didn't have the air of arrogance around him, but anyone could see that he was confident in his abilities. Hinata had her Byakugan activated and was studying her enemy to the best of her extent. Her Byakugan would come particularly helpful against him, as she could see the bones coming out of his body before they had even left it, although something seemed wrong with his body. Kimimaru's system seemed to be on overdrive and his metabolism seemed to be higher than normal. They both blurred towards each other and engaged in a heated battle of taijutsu. Neither one of them was gaining advantage over the other. Kimimaru was physically stronger, but Hinata was faster and more flexible. Dance of the Camilla, Kimimaru said, and Hinata watched as the bones started protruding from his left shoulder. It was a small bit at first, but then it became more and more visible as it came out. Kimimaru placed his right hand on it and pulled the rest of the bone out. It was a short, bone-hilted bone sword. When then suddenly he dashed towards Hinata at great speed and performed a series of fast stabbings trying to confuse Hinata as some attackings mirrored after images. However, that wasn't a problem for Hinata's Byakugan. Even though it seemed like after images to regular eyes, Hinata's Byakugan could easily track all of them, and she proceeded to dodge every single strike Kimimaru performed. It was like she was dancing. If Kimimaru stabbed in front, she just sidestepped and left. Kimimaru would readjust the trajectory, but Hinata would simply dodge again. 
having enough of just dodging. Hinata and waited for another stab that was a bit to her right. The moment it came, she sidestepped and swatted his arm away. Taking advantage of Kimimaru's error, she recoiled her right arm and said, Air palm. Kimimaru was hit square on at point blank by an air palm right in his chest. Kimimaru was thrown backwards and crashed in the ground, but was unharmed. Ten finger drilling bullets, Kimimaru said as he got back up. He pointed his finger at Hinata and fired his fingertips at her with great speed. Hinata could easily track them with her Byakugan and simply dodge them. Water style, wild water wave, Hinata said and unleashed a stream of water from her mouth. The water was sent towards Kimimaru and he jumped away to avoid it. He looked around for Hinata only for her to appear behind him. 64 palms of the hand, Hinata said, and began her attacks by closing the major chakra points. In the middle of her attack, she was forced to jump back when bones popped out of his chest, giving her no choice but to make some distance. This is why I say that Jukin is almost useless, Hinata thought sighing. Kimimaru had just created bone plates beneath his skin that were thick enough for her Jukin strikes to be rendered useless. Her flowing fist was useless against Kimimaru, and as such, she would need to come up with another plan. She would have to resort to her poisons and ninjutsu and attack at his most vulnerable point, his neck. Kimimaru rushed Hinata as he had the advantage in a taijutsu fight. Dance of the willow, Kimimaru said, and several bone blades started growing from several points on his body. His palms, his knees, elbows, and shoulders now had long bones protruding from them. Hinata quickly took out her daggers and channeling wind chakra through them and engaged Kimimaru in a deadly dance of weapons to see who would come out the winner. Hinata was surprised when she saw that the bones were holding against her daggers. It appeared as they weren't normal bones as they were far stronger than normal ones. She took a closer look and noticed that Kimimaru was even running chakra through them. Kimimaru was so busy fighting Kinata that he did didn't see another one approaching from behind. Water style, water prison jutsu, Hinata's clone said, and using the water from the previous attack, she trapped Kimimaru inside a water prison. Knowing it would be too dangerous to even approach him, she decided to let him drown. This isn't going to stop me, Kimimaru said, and a very long bone shot from his hand. The bone completely pierced through the water prison and Hinata's clone making it disperse in water, and letting Kimimaru out of his prison. The original Hinata jumped back to gain some distance when she saw her clone uh, being destroyed. Water whip, Hinata said, and several whips of water started forming and trapped Kimimaru by his hands and ankles. Hinata blurred towards them, and channeling chakra to her hand, she slammed her hand into Kimimaru's chest. To her surprise, instead of hitting his skin and killing him, her hand was stopped by several bones that popped out of his chest, rendering her attack useless. Hinata jumped back and pouted. She couldn't get any attack in. It was obvious that his bloodline was far more suited for Taijutsu than hers was. However, she wouldn't give up just because her opponent was tough. A thousand needles of death, Hinata said, and hundreds of water needles formed around her, and shot towards Kimimaro, who remained in place. The water needles collided with Kimimaro, but they simply bounced back and fell to the ground. Those bones, Hinata thought, shaking her head. Kimimaro had created, uh, once again, a layer of bone to block all of the needles. Hinata knew that to even poison him with her senbon, she would have to catch him by surprise. Water style, water dragon jutsu, Hinata said, and a huge dragon formed from the water on the ground and growled its way towards Kimimaro. That's a bit too much to simply stand by, Kimimaro thought as he began running to avoid the dragon that eventually crashed into the ground and dispelled uh, into water. Hinata reappeared next to him and engaged him in taijutsu. However, this time Kimimaro found himself completely on the defense due to Hinata's fierce attacks. Kimimaro was parrying Hinata's daggers as best as he could, but he didn't understand why his adversary had suddenly gotten a power spike. He was busy thinking that he didn't notice when one of Hinata's clones appeared behind him from all the water on the ground. Kimimaro suddenly felt the presence behind him and pushed bones from his back out. The bones immediately hit the clone and it was destroyed. Kimimaro suddenly felt himself snared to the ground by water whips. He didn't notice the presence of a second clone. Here, Hinata thought as she pushed herself as fast as she could and slashed Kimimaro's throat with her wind and enhanced daggers. Kimimaro saw this and he didn't have much choice. He pushed all of his bones out and destroyed the water whips and grazed Hinata on her shoulder. Kimimaro jumped back when he noticed a few drops of blood falling on the ground. He placed his hand on his neck and felt a small bit of pain. Hinata had managed to cut him, deep enough to draw blood. Now we wait, Hinata thought as she had successfully injected her poison into him. 
The cut might not be deep enough, but the poison would eventually spread, and all she had to do was wait. Kimimaro was starting to feel weak. His vision was starting to fade into nothing more than blurs. It was then that he understood that he had been poisoned. Kimimaro looked towards Kabuto, who was busy fighting those three brats, and he knew that he didn't have time to try and heal him. Kimimaro had no choice but to go into level 2. Kimimaro channeled Chakra to his Earth Curse Seal located in the middle of his chest. Black markings started spreading through his body until he was totally covered. He now had dark gray skin, six large bone spikes protruding out of his back, and a long bone spiked tail. Hinata could already tell that his strength increased by quite a bit, and if he used it now, then it must have been a neutralizer poison. Hinata saw Kimimaro suddenly start running towards her. For lack of a better word, Kimimaro looked like a dinosaur rampaging towards her. Hinata braced herself, and the moment Kimimaro arrived near her, she sidestepped and grabbed one of his bones from his back. She jumped at his back. Her chakra flared, and her daggers glowed blue as she was ready to kill him for good. Kimimaro spiked his chakra, and another bone popped from his back. Hinata just had enough to tilt her head to the side, but she still got scratched on her cheek, drawing blood. Hinata jumped away to gain some distance when she saw Kimimaro crouch. Dance of the Clematis Vine, Kimimaro said, and a small bone started growing out from the back of his head. At the top of his spine, Kimimaro grabbed it and pulled it out. Hinata's eyes widened when she saw exactly what he had pulled. Kimimaro had pulled out his own spine and now had it pointed at her like some spear. Kimimaro flexed the spear and she expanded it, going fast towards Hinata. Water shield, Hinata said, and the water rose around her, making a small shield around her chest. Hinata used the jutsu fast enough as Kimimaro's spine suddenly wrapped itself around her, pinning her to the spot. Dance of the Clematis. Flower, Kimimaro said, and a bone started emerging, and wrapping itself around Kimimaro's left arm. Kimimaro channeled extreme amounts of chakra to create the thickest bone he could. The bone itself seemed like a drill and completely covered Kimimaro's left arm. Die! Kimimaro yelled as he thrust his left arm towards the immobile Hinata. Chitin, Hinata said, and using the water shield around her as oil and a motor, she started spinning. A blue chakra dome appeared around her. Kimimaro's strongest attack connected, but her shield didn't waver, and slowly but surely, Hinata's chitin started eating away his bone due to the spinning effect. A few seconds later, Kimimaro's bone was nothing more than dust on the ground. They were about to jump at each other again when they heard a small explosion, followed by a small cloud of smoke. Sasuke Uchiha had awakened from his coma, and his appearance had completely changed. Shikamaru, Kiba, and Choji vs. Kabuto Oh my, I'm up against three babies, Kabuto said chuckling and pushing his glasses upwards. Uh, if I remember correctly, it was a baby named Naruto that killed you, Shikamaru said yawning at the face of such a troublesome opponent. Don't even mix him with you. Neither of you hold a candle to what Naruto can do. Only Lord Orochimaru can match Naruto's power. That's the reason we came to retrieve Sasuke personally as Kidomaru had informed us of what they were up against. Kabuto explained that his hands started glowing and buzzing like chainsaws. Let's go, Kiba said as Shikamaru crouched and placed his hand on the rat still making his shadow simmer. Suga, Kiba said and started spinning and going towards Kabuto who smirked. Kabuto simply sidestepped the attack, making Kiba simply pass by him. The moment that Kiba passed by him, Kabuto recoiled and kicked Kiba hard on the back. Kiba lost control of his attack and slammed into a tree, slightly dazed. Don't attack blindly, Shikamaru yelled. Don't you remember what Naruto said? He's as strong as Kakashi, making him an elite jonin, Shikamaru stated. Shadow imitation jutsu, Shikamaru said, and his shadow blurred towards Kabuto. Kabuto had just kicked Kiba onto the ground and didn't notice the shadow. Kabuto got caught and was frozen on the spot. Human bullet tank, Choji said, and began spinning towards Kabuto. Choji rolled, picking up speed and crashing into Kabuto, sending him crashing into a nearby tree. They were running towards him to place the tag and end the battle when Kabuto puffed into smoke to reveal a small wooden log. Kabuto popped out of the ground just behind Shikamaru and grabbed him by the ankles. Using his chakra scalpel, he managed to cut Shikamaru's tendon and both of his feet, thus disabling his movement. Shikamaru groaned and fell to his knees. 
clutching his feet, who are now temporarily disabled. This is bad, Shikamaru thought. Shikamaru was now a sitting target as he couldn't move properly. The only thing he could do was now give support to both Kiba and Choji with his shadow. Anything else other than that he was unable to do. Choji, Kiba, Shikamaru called out, and they approached him so he could explain his plan. They all took their positions and Kiba started running towards Kabuto, and while Shikamaru did uh, what he did best, he sat down and began to use his shadow to provide some help to Kiba by distracting Kabuto. Hidden snake hands, Kabuto said, and flexed his right arm forward. Four snakes suddenly jumped from his sleeves and wrapped themselves around Kiba. Kabuto spun and threw Kiba onto a tree, making him cough a bit of blood and fall to the ground. Akamaru quickly ran to the side of his partner. Too slow, Kabuto said and jumped away from the shadow that was creeping out behind him. Kabuto jumped several times as the shadow didn't seem to stop chasing him. Kabuto quickly threw a couple of shurikens and kunai and threw them at Shikamaru, who had to roll to avoid them since he couldn't properly move. Now, Shikamaru yelled, Expansion Jutsu! Choji yelled and jumped from the top of the trees over the field. His body expanded into a very large spherical form covering most of the field in shadows. Shikamaru took the opportunity and used his shadow that quickly connected to Kabuto since almost all of the field was covered in shadows due to Choji blocking the sun. Gatsuga, Kiba yelled as both he and his partner started spinning like a drill and crashed into Kabuto. Kiba and Akamaru completely wrecked Kabuto's shoulder and he was sent crashing into the ground and he was already starting to reform. Place the tag quickly, Shikamaru said and Choji ran as fast as he could towards Kabuto. Choji arrived near him and was about to place the attack when Kabuto got up and punched him in the stomach, making him buckle and kicked him away. My my, you almost got me, Kabuto said chuckling as his shoulder had completely reformed, as if nothing had ever happened. Feels like new, Kabuto said flexing his arm. Boom, Sasuke Uchiha had awoken. Naruto vs Orochimaru Naruto and Orochimaru were having a fierce battle in Taijutsu. Orochimaru's speed was nothing compared to Naruto's, and with a Sharingan, Orochimaru couldn't hit Naruto. On the other hand, Orochimaru could bend his body at unnatural angles, which enabled him to dodge Naruto's attacks. During the battle, some hits got in, but nothing major for either of them. Hidden snake hands, Orochimaru said, flexing his right arm forward. Snakes came out from his sleeves and wrapped themselves around Naruto, only for him to disperse in a cloud of smoke. Raikiri, Naruto says he appeared right behind Orochimaru with his hand coated in lightning. Naruto pierced through Orochimaru's chest, destroying his heart. Orochimaru started melting into mud, revealing it to be an ordinary earth clone. Suddenly, Orochimaru popped out of the ground with a sword in his mouth, ready to stab Naruto through the chest. Naruto easily saw him coming with a Sharingan, and used his Kamui to simply let the attack slip through him. Naruto jumped to the side and used his sword to cleave Orochimaru's body in half. To his surprise, the two halves of Orochimaru simply sent snakes to the other end and merged themselves together again, as if nothing had ever happened. Wind style, great breakthrough, Orochimaru said and clapped his hands together, and it created a very strong gust of wind. Naruto channeled Chakra to his feet to stick to the ground, but the gust of wind was too strong, and he had to jump away from it. Fire style, fire dragon jutsu, Naruto said, and took advantage of the existing wind to power up his fire attack against Orochimaru. Orochimaru was enveloped in a cloud of fire. Once it dissipated, there was nothing more than an empty shell in its place. Naruto looked around but couldn't feel where Orochimaru was. Orochimaru suddenly popped out behind him from the ground with his fingers glowing. Five element seal, Orochimaru said and slammed his hand in Naruto, only to simply phase through him. Once Orochimaru passed through him, Naruto turned around and kicked him in the chest, sending him flying. He wants to disable Kurama. Too bad it wouldn't work, Naruto thought as he saw Orochimaru getting up, as if nothing had ever happened. Orochimaru's mouth suddenly opened to inhuman proportions, and another Orochimaru came out. Naruto concluded that that particular jutsu took a heavy chunk of his chakra away, but interestingly enough, the snake sounding wasn't even close to half of his chakra reserves. But then again, Naruto had barely scratched the surface of his. Orochimaru suddenly flashed her hand seals that Naruto immediately recognized, but he was too late to stop it. Summoning Edo Tensei, Orochimaru said, clapping his hands, and a single coffin popped out. The coffin opened, and Hashirama Senju came out, still in its sleep state. Can't he fight his own battles, Naruto muttered, sighing as his eyes glowed for a moment. 
Hironosu, Naruto muttered under his breath as he watched everything roll back in time. Hashirama walked back to the coffin and closed it by itself. The coffin then went underground. Naruto's eyes glowed, and time started again the moment Orochimaru was thinking of the hand seals. Naruto threw a three-pronged kunai towards Orochimaru as he was starting the seal sequence, and appeared right next to him. Odama Rasengan, Naruto said, and pushed his large chakra ball into Orochimaru. A large blue dome of chakra erupted due to the explosion. Once the dust was gone, Orochimaru was nowhere to be seen. However, Naruto had seen Orochimaru mold chakra into a jutsu that he knew all too well. Just as he expected, Orochimaru popped out from the ground just in front of him with a sword in his mouth. Naruto sidestepped his sword thrust and kneed him in the stomach, making him buckle in pain. Naruto flipped Orochimaru and trapped him in a chokehold, and used his kamui to start absorbing him. Slithering snake mode, Orochimaru muttered, and the lower part of his body became flexible and similar to a snake's tail. Orochimaru used his tail to wrap itself around Naruto's arm, and broke the chokehold allowing him to substitute with a nearby log. Once he substituted, Naruto disabled his kamui and watched Orochimaru slither away to gain some distance. Orochimaru was about to do another set of hand seals when he was interrupted. Really? Again with the Edo Tensei? Can't you fight your own battles? Must you depend on another one's power, Naruto said at the shocked face of Orochimaru. How did you know I was going to do the Edo Tensei? Orochimaru asked curiously. Why should I tell you anything? Naruto stated smirking as Orochimaru scowled, boy. Let's just say my eyes are more powerful than you can imagine, Orochimaru, Naruto said taunting him. My eyes are everything that you always wanted, but you'll never get the set, Naruto said chuckling as Orochimaru plummeted to the ground. Is Sasuke going to take much more to complete the ritual, Orochimaru thought to himself and weighing his options. Ten thousand snakes wave, Orochimaru said as he opened his mouth. Thousands of snakes suddenly started crawling out of his mouth, forming a gigantic wave towards Naruto. The snake's wall rose into the air, blocking the sun's view and casting a shadow onto the battlefield. Does he even have any jutsu not snake related? Naruto said sighing. Naruto gripped his fan from his back and placed his left hand on the tiger seal. His chakra spiked as his lungs filled with air laced with chakra. Fire style, fire dragon jutsu, Naruto said, and unleashed a torrent of fire shaped in a dragon's head into the oncoming snakes. Once his fire jutsu had started, Naruto swung his fan, creating a very powerful gust of wind that powered up his fire attack. Naruto had unleashed an inferno that washed against the snakes. Almost all the snakes were instantly vaporized, leaving just a few for Naruto to deal with personally. Summoning Jutsu, Orochimaru said as he swiped blood across his tattoo on his arm. A very large brown snake appeared in a cloud of smoke and instantly tried to crush Naruto. Naruto jumped to the side to avoid it and then jumped away to gain some distance. Snakes again, Naruto said shaking his head and preparing his attack to finish the snake before it could cause more confusion. Their battle was beginning to escalate as they had already used some large scale Jutsu. Naruto focused his chakra and his eyes glowed. Suddenly and out of nowhere, chains bursted from the ground. However, these chains weren't the traditional golden that Naruto used to summon. These chains were burning with black flames. Naruto had combined his golden chains with his Amaterasu. Inferno chains, Naruto said as his flaming chains instantly dashed and wrapped themselves around the snake. The snake hissed in pain and tried struggling out of them, but couldn't. The chains were tightly wrapped around it, and Orochimaru jumped down from the snake as another chain tried to wrap itself around him. The snake dispelled in a cloud of smoke. Naruto attracted his chains and they started floating above him, aiming to Orochimaru. The chains were just hovering around Naruto as if waiting uh, the order of their master to engage. Naruto smirked and the chains suddenly blurred towards his opponent. Orochimaru ran for his life and tried his best to dodge as best as he could. Naruto's chain attacks were similar to Hashirama's wood styles, both could freely manipulate each one. The problem was that Naruto's attack was infinitely more deadlier. If you were caught by the trees, no big deal. However, if you were caught by these chains, you would instantly be ignited with the Matarasu flames that can't be put out, and it would mean instant death. Orochimaru jumped to the side to dodge a chain. The moment he landed, another chain popped out of the ground and tried to wrap itself around his ankle, but Orochimaru managed to substitute with a nearby log. Suddenly, the chains stopped the chase and stopped midway between Naruto and Orochimaru. The chains were acting like vertical bars, slightly apart, slipping Naruto from Orochimaru. Queen style, great breakthrough, Naruto said, and released gusts of wind from his lung. Orochimaru's eyes widened when Naruto's wind attack connected with the chains and brought upon it a wave of black flames. 
Naruto's wind attack carried the black flames, making a gigantic wave of Amaterasu flames that washed over Orochimaru. Orochimaru's body was completely enveloped in black flames, as well as a nearby field. Orochimaru had nowhere to go, unless underground, and that is what he did. Orochimaru switched his skin and used his earth jutsu to move underground to some place where the black flames weren't active. This brat is way too dangerous, Orochimaru thought to himself, as a small bead of sweat rolled down his face. Orochimaru looked to his right and sighed, happy that he had survived the inferno that was still going on down there, and by the looks of it, it wasn't going to end anytime soon. Naruto was about to light Orochimaru on fire with his black flames when a loud explosion echoed through all the clearing that Naruto had created with his fan. The barrel where Sasuke was exploded in a cloud of purple smoke. The moment the barrel exploded, everyone stopped their battles and regrouped with their allies. Sasuke jumped out of the barrel and landed in the middle of both factions. Sasuke's second level of the curse seal turned his skin dark gray, with a black four point star mark between his eyes and across the bridge of his nose. His sclera turned black, and his irises turned yellow, and his lips turned blue. He also grew claw-like nails and his hair grew to waist length without losing his style. And people call me a monster, Naruto muttered out loud, taking in the new shape of Sasuke. He already expected something like this when he saw just what exactly the sound for it could become. Naruto shifted his eyes towards Kimaru who looked like a rhinoceros ready to stomp on someone. Naruto then looked towards his team to take into account their injuries. Shikamaru was on the ground nursing his ankle as Hinata was already healing them. Both Kiba and Choji were out of breath and we could see the sweat rolling off them. Naruto then turned to Hinata who looked fine with the exception of a couple of scratches through her clothes and one on her cheek. Sasuke Uchiha, Naruto said in a strong and commanding voice. By order of the fifth Hokage, you are to return to Konoha to face trial for the murder of Sakura Haruno. If your retrieval is impossible, termination has been allowed, Naruto explained with his Sharingan spinning and his killing intent rolling. Sasuke laughed loud before suddenly stopping and turning to Naruto with a dark look. She served her purpose, Sasuke said, making his Mangekyo flare to life and trying to intimidate his adversaries. It worked to some extent, as all but Naruto and Hinata were shivering just from the looks of those eyes. If Sasuke killed Sakura to achieve those eyes, then they must be something else. You killed her just to get those eyes? Kiba yelled to Sasuke. She was our teammate and you killed her in cold blood, Kiba said. I already told everyone that I would stop at nothing to get my revenge, Sasuke coolly said. Now that I have these eyes, Sasuke said, pointing towards Mangekyo. I'm going to kill all of you, Sasuke said laughing as his chakra spiked. A small trail of blood started leaking out from his eye as his chakra flared. Amaterasu, Sasuke said, and Naruto erupted in black flames. Sasuke laughed, thinking he got Naruto, but he was very surprised when he noticed that the black flames were swirling away in his eyes. Wind style, great breakthrough, Naruto said, and released a gust of wind at the same time he released the black flames from his eyes. A wave of black fire washed over his enemies who had jumped away to avoid it. I don't see this ending well, Orochimaru said to his company. Kabuto, do it, Orochimaru ordered, and Kabuto nodded, uh, jumping towards Sasuke. Naruto took advantage of the time they were retreating and started channeling lightning chakra through his hands. He formed the all too well known blue chakra sphere and it went into the sky. The sky instantly became darker and darker. The wind started rustling furiously as loud thunders could be heard echoing through the clearing. This isn't good, Orochimaru said to himself as he remembered the attack very well from the report to the Sunan sound invasion. He's going to kill us all, Sasuke yelled towards Orochimaru to do something. He had already seen this jutsu, and there wasn't much they could do. The only problem Naruto was facing that, if he launched this jutsu, there probably wouldn't be anything left of Sasuke to take back to Konoha. Like I care, I can just use the Edo Tensei to prove he's dead, Naruto thought to himself, agreeing with his logic. Lightning style. Kirin. Naruto said, and the thunder gathered in a single one. Naruto's hand sparked with lightning as he did a downward movement to command the dragon to attack his target. Before Naruto could finalize the jutsu, a very large bone bursted from the ground very close to the position. Due to Naruto's Sharingan, he could easily track the bone and shifted his body to avoid it. The problem was that, by moving his body from its original position, 
His Kirin Jutsu rocketed down upon the earth but with the wrong target. The field exploded and sent debris and trees everywhere. Naruto was in contact with everyone in his team and used his Kamui to make everyone intangible. Once the smoke started clearing, uh, what was uh, once in a clearing of uh, trees surrounding it was now nothing more than a crater similar to just outside of Konoha. The dust clouds had cleared and Naruto refocused on the battlefield. Kabuto was reforming as he seemingly lost about all of his body from his neck down. Sasuke was on the ground with his clothes ripped apart and his body smoking, and he was back to his original self. His curse seal was deactivated, meaning that he was unconscious. Kimaru appeared to be externally well, but that thought was gone when he fell to the ground, coughing up blood. Naruto looked for Orochimaru until he saw a hand burst from the ground near Sasuke. Orochimaru crawled out of the hole, barely breathing. Damn you, Orochimaru yelled in pain. Naruto just smiled while both Shikamaru and Shoji were gapping like a fish at the jutsu Naruto used. You don't look good, Naruto said to Orochimaru, who vomited himself out of his old body. Orochimaru stood in front of them completely unharmed, but Naruto could see that his chakra reserves were almost gone. He would have to retreat if he wanted to live, but Naruto wasn't going to allow that. Naruto jumped towards Orochimaru and his company. Suddenly, four other Narutos popped off from the ground, forming a square around everyone minus Hinata, Joji, Kiba, and Shikamaru. Ninja Art Four Flames Formation The clones all yelled, and a large purple barrier was set in place, trapping everyone inside. You can't escape now, Orochimaru, Naruto said smirking. This is your end, Naruto said as he flashed Sasuke and quickly absorbed him into his dimension. Naruto started leaking out red shock from his body, and that placed Orochimaru on alert. Kabuto, do you have them? Orochimaru asked, and Kabuto nodded, throwing two vials to Orochimaru, who proceeded to swallow them. Back to Naruto, he suddenly exploded in a shockwave of red chakra. Naruto now had four chakra tails connected to his backbone. His whole appearance was like a miniature QB. Naruto was leaking out chakra and killing a tent that would kill an ordinary Junin with just that. Dance of the seeding burn, Kimimaru said, and he used the last of his strength to launch his attack. Hundreds of bones started bursting through the ground. Naruto let out a mighty roar in his QB form. The bones were all shattered like simple twigs. Naruto coiled off his tails just above his mouth and red and blue chakra started gathering in the air. What's he doing? Kiba asked, slightly afraid. He never saw Naruto use the Kiwi's chakra and the feeling he got from it didn't please him. We need to move away, Hinata said. Now, she yelled and everyone jumped away from the barrier. Tail beast bomb, Naruto said, and this sent the chakra ball towards Orochimaru. Until we meet again, Naruto, Orochimaru said, and disappeared in a cloud of smoke. Damn it, he used the reverse summoning jutsu, Naruto thought as the biju bomb connected with Kabuto and Kimimaro. Naruto instantly flashed out of the barrier and set up an earth barrier around his team. Boom! A very large explosion occurred on the field. The ground shook like an earthquake. The purple barrier couldn't stand a biju dama and as such was destroyed along with Kabuto and Kimimaro. A large column of fire and smoke rose into the skies, enveloping everything in darkness. When everything had calmed down, Naruto looked towards the battlefield and saw no evidence of either Kabuto, Kimimaro, or any of the sound for. Naruto and his team had completed the mission with a few extra bonuses. They had retrieved Sasuke, who was now trapped inside Naruto's dimension. They killed five sound shinobi, and they now knew that Kabuto was still alive, due to Orochimaru using the Edo Tensei technique. Not a bad day in the end.